So today we're going to see if we can give this um, West Clocks a bit of a service. Now, Gregola Productions, another YouTube clock person, has started a series alongside this one. And he's doing a uh, West Clocks Charmer, which is like a special edition Baby Ben style 7. Now, this one is also a special edition Baby Ben style 7. Although it's slightly more common than the Charmer, it's still, you know, special edition. So, this one, I think is called, like, Poppy Finish, because it's got flowers on the outside. There was, uh, I think there was, like, um, different colours. I might be able to find an image of that in a bit. On these. Now, this one, I've had for quite a while, and... I haven't done anything with it. I have opened it up a couple of times before, uh, just to see what was going on with it. And just to confirm that it was in fact a style 7 movement underneath. A bit like this one. And the main problems with it are it doesn't run for very long, so it must be a bit dirty or something. And also, this pull out button at the back to stop the alarm uh, is not working properly it just goes back in when it should stay out and I've been practicing on this movement and I'll show you a special technique we can use on it to remove the knobs in a bit and uh, yeah I'll be doing this alongside Gregola Productions he's got a series on uh, his Charmer and it'll be uh, quite nice sort of side-by-side -side thing, just like that. So before I start, there's a couple of things I want to just update you with. Uh, first of all, the Bayard. The face now is repaired. There we go. It's dry. Show about the crack, but oh well. It's like a battle scar. There's also the Kaiser, which has been painted in creamy uh, butterscotch kind of colour. Looks quite nice. And I might actually sell this one pretty soon. So uh, yeah, I'll sell it. And when I was serving this one, my first video of this channel, I parted out a Baby Ben Style 8 for the mechanism. And since then I've actually found another spring, so I actually brought the Baby Ben back to life. And one of the main problems with it is it was missing its bottom bit. So I thought, why not make my own base for it? And it's now got this sort of futuristic kind of pedestal. It was also missing a button, so at the moment I've just got a screw for the top of it. Let me just wind it up. It works very well. So we can get back to our Benita. This is the Benita. Did I say that already? I can't remember. This model's called the Benita. And I think this is the first Benita because I've also seen Baby Ben Style 8s with a sort of plastic ball around them. I'll get a picture of them in a minute as well. And they got Benita written on the dial. This one's just got West Clocks made in Scotland. And I think these were only made for Scotland and Canada. I haven't I don't know if there are any USA versions of these out there. So I thought we should get started. Get more light here. Move the lamp, there we go. And I just wanna go through with you this technique that Gregola Productions himself taught me. And here we go, let's just, to remove the knobs, it's quite important you do that because there's no real other way of separating these movement plates on a Style 7 Baby Ben without removing the uh, stuff at the front, which you probably don't want to do as it can get damaged. So, first thing to do, first thing I do, is remove these spring barrels. 
Now this is a scrap movement, as I when I bought it, I didn't notice it was actually missing the balance wheel. Someone must have stolen it. So, I'm just using it for parts. I mean, I would actually get a... Uh, I don't have my uh, Style 7 Baby Ben to show you right now, to compare the backs, but um, I think you can see by the uh, arrangement of knobs that they are, in fact, the same movement underneath. So, we're going to need two pairs of pliers. These are the only ones that I've, I've got that work with this situation. So, what I do is put one there and put one there, just like that. So it's underneath the shoulder of the knob and just pull them like that. Now that one I've actually done a couple of times before, so it probably wouldn't be that easy to take off. But you get the idea, just use a bit more force and try not to bend the shaft. I'll try it with this one. Now, I've recorded this after seeing part one of uh, Gregola's, or part one and two of Gregola Productions videos. And he had a bit of trouble getting this one off, this uh, alarm knob. However, I've actually done this before with this one. And I don't know if it's either the uh, Scottish ones are built differently or not. But um, this one seemed to be okay. Good thing there's a plastic practice movement. There we go. Comes off like that. Now, again, it was probably easier to uh, do it the second time around. But now, I can just slide that out. You can see it's sort of squared off at the end where the uh, knob was. I'm just going to leave this on there for now so it doesn't get confused. And you've got a couple of washers and a spring. Just pay attention to where they go. And then that can come off, that spring. And then the alarm rod pulley thing comes out. Now you can see on this movement, it's got that little metal flap there. And that allows this knob, another way, to... um click into position and that is the problem with the Benita. So I think it's something to do with that little spring. So we'll find out in a minute. And I've noticed uh, the Charmer is a very similar construction to the Benita. They've both got this plastic inside bit, I think it's plastic anyway, around this bell, which is basically the same as a baby Ben. I've got a um, foot screwed onto the bottom of it and uh, some sort of metal thing stuck to the front. I think the uh, plastic lens might be the same as well. Now you might also notice that the luminous paint has been scraped out of these uh, hands as it used to have sort of luminous paint in them. And when I got it it was actually broken and sort of floating around at the bottom. So um, I did very carefully uh, tip it in the bin, scrape the rest out, just for it to look a bit better, I think. But I think we can try in this video to uh, put some new luminous paint on there, as I've had a little pot of it for a while. I haven't used it much. So we'll see how that goes. If not, we can just leave them skeletal. Now, unfortunately, the screw doesn't want to come out. I think it's because the plastic underneath it is chewed up from repeated screwing. So what I'm going to do is add an upward direction to my turning by slipping a screwdriver underneath the screw whilst I turn it and pulling upwards and hopefully if we'll find a bigger screwdriver. And unfortunately I can't find my bigger screwdriver, so we're just going to have to make do with what we've got. 
try not to scratch the uh, there we go it's coming out now hopefully if you're here too restoring your Bonita whilst watching this video the screw will be slightly easier to remove rather than just turning around inside the hole uh, where is it? let's use that a bit difficult isn't it? there we go finally we've got that little screw let's just put that over there and we've got the bottom screw as well now if you've seen Gregory Le Productions' Charmer videos already, the first couple, as th those are the only ones out there whilst this video comes out, you might notice that um, it has a very similar construction to this one. As I'm going to remove that brass bit on the outside, I think it's brass. And then we've got this metal plate, which I assume is different for all the different decoration types. And I want to keep this in the right way up, because it is slightly different, because it seems to have a bit of fading on that corner. So I'll just remember the faded corners in the top right, so I can keep the originality. Then we can see the front has got this plastic thing, which just comes off. And then we've got the plastic lens, and we've got the hands, the camera focus. There we go, we've got the hands, there we go, face, movement. Now you notice that those hands came off very easily, and that's because I have been at them before. Unfortunately, uh, on the other side of things, Gregola Productions did not have such an easy time of removing their hands. I got these ones off by uh, getting some pliers on them. We've got some uh, pliers with tape on them and just do that, pulling them at the same time. And unfortunately, his pliers were too big, so we couldn't do that, but oh well. Also, you might notice this minute hand does not have a cap on the end. I think all the uh, Scottish ones did not have a cap on, the, on them. All the Canadian ones did. Well, that's based on my minute or so of internet research, anyway. Let's get these three screws out for the bell. Just like that. Now, you don't need to remove that little foot at the bottom, but I'm going to do it anyway, just to show you can. On the Charmer, you have a large brass thing with two wings on the other side. This one's just got a painted... Pick that up in a second. It's just got a painted sort of tongue type thing. Just gonna do that. Now hopefully the um the knobs will be easy to remove and not extremely difficult. Now on the back here we have a sort of strange marking carved into it. I think it must have been opened up by someone in the past called VH I think that says. But we've also got this rubber thing. Now I call this a K, because on most models, except this one, it looks like a letter K. And I think that's mainly style 8's, where it's a slightly different arrangement to this one. And just uh, Unfortunately, Gregola's rubber has perished, so it sort of melted to the uh, thing. But uh, this one, I think, survived slightly better, and it's still got a sort of dryness to it. It's still pretty fragile, but definitely yeah, it doesn't stick. So next up we can just go ahead and remove these four screws. They hold the movement into this inner case. I should probably keep a thing of what belongs to this clock and what doesn't be a good idea wouldn't it? See I've emptied these barrels of springs so they're both broken. I don't want to confuse myself. We can use these spare parts if we have to. Another thing I've noticed, here we go again, is um, 
the Canadian knobs seem to have more of that stripiness to them. The grippy edge. It goes a bit further down. These ones are sort of more at the top. Put that over there. Can turn on removing our movement. I think we've done it already. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, sometimes that hammer there. Let's see it. That little hammer gets stuck in that hole. So you might want to just make sure it's not in there. Okay, so here we've got our movement. Seems to be running mediumly okay. Although you can see it has got some sort of bit of fluff rotating on one of the pivots right now. Which is not an ideal sign, just there. So, um, first, actually, let's address that in a bit. Let's tidy this up first. Actually, it looks like one of the uh, nuts has got stuck in the screw the other way around. That's a bit. doesn't come out. In a minute. I don't know my big screwdriver, that's a pain, isn't it? Get my amazing hand eye coordination there. Just undo that. Now, as that got stuck in that, I don't want that to happen again, so I may as well just swap it out with one of the ones on the spare movement. There we go. See if this is any better. Then that would have gone on there. There we go. Now, in order to take this apart, which I think we'll need to do, to give it a proper surface, we'll need to remove these spring barrels. Now unfortunately I think I've already let all the power down out of these a while ago but just to double check move that little thumb out the way. There we go. It looks like there's a little bit left in there. So it looks like someone's actually taken some of the screws away from me. Let's move it in a bit. I think there should be one there as well but we've only got two. So I'll have to get some from the spare movement, scavenge. There we go, nearly. There's one. There's two. Out comes the spring. There it is. See if it's in good condition. There we go. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's not kinked or anything, that's the problem. Make sure it latches well. Yeah, that's got a good grip on there. Alright. And number two. I wonder why they made these spring barrels on such massive bits of metal because if you look there I don't see any purpose for that lump coming out there a bit strange isn't it the original baby Ben I think well, not the very first one but the uh, one of the originals anyway I think it was style 2 or something there we go Right, that's good. So the next thing we can do, I think, is to remove the balance wheel. To do that, I'll pull the pin out like that. I'm going to move that regulation arm all the way to the side where the little lug is that it goes into. Not lug, what's it called? Stud, that's it. And I'm going to feed that spring through the holes. There we go. 
So now that spring's not in connected in anything. Oh, it's just gone back in again. There we go. Now that spring is not connected into anything. So I can just undo that little nut at the bottom. Oops. Okay, pliers slipping a little bit. And just like that comes out. Alright, what's next? The next thing we can do is remove the knobs. Let's see how well this goes. We've got spare parts, but I don't want to use them. I want to make sure nothing breaks. So I'll zoom you out a bit. These two knobs here we need to remove. We don't need to worry about that one because that comes off with something else. So let's try this one first using the old technique of loads of pliers doing that. Yay! Off came it. Very good. Now this is a lot easier than trying to remove the knobs on a 66 or a style 8 where I think they must have put them on a bit tighter for some reason. I don't know why they don't do a conventional put the knob on with pressure thing. They actually have to make it so you can't remove them whatsoever. So with this one, let's, let's tr try it. Don't have as much hope for this one. However, let's see. It's harder to get a grip on. I think I sort of move a little bit. Let's move you in a bit more. Get a better view of the action. The problem is there's not enough space to put my pliers. Well, that's a bit better. Come on. Oh yeah, we did it. Amazing. Alright, that's great. So, where did that spring go? Because I know there's a spring on there. There it is. There's the spring. So, we've got the wheels, actually. I think it would be quite useful if we do a diagram of it. How interesting. So, we'll need a, something to draw it on, such as the inside of a box lid, like that. The inside of a box. See if we can guess what that brown disc is from there. I don't think we'll be able to, but it'll be interesting to try. And let's bend it down. And we got, alright, for this, we got our uh, thing with a bit on it. We got the alarm timing finger and thing. We got uh, the rod going through the whole thing, which I'll draw in orange. AKA black, because so orange is the new black. Maybe I just forgot where my orange pen was. And we got it going straight through the movement plates. Nothing in between. And then there's the other movement plate at the top. And then a washer. And then another washer on the other side. I'm running out of space. Then we've got a spring. And then the knob. Very useful diagram there. So we'll just have that by my side. It's good to keep the diagrams of things, especially if you're like me, where you use diagrams a lot. Good. And we can just go ahead and remove all this alarm stuff. So we can pull that out, I think. Maybe not. Maybe we can't. No, we can. I don't know what I was talking about. There we go. I had a bit of tension from the uh, little spring there. So just to pull that out, pull this out, and we can see this is actually a bit bent, so we can sort that out when we put it back together, and yeah, we can just separate these plates, good. Unscrew these four little brass nuts. And three, two, one. Whew. Open it goes. I don't know why that one's just had a clink at the top. Bad. Come on, we can put everything there. See how horrifically dirty the movement is on the inside. Look at all that gumminess. 
That's it. I've seen worse ones, to be honest. Move that. Move that. We probably wouldn't get that off, to be honest. It's got that pinion on there, which we probably shouldn't remove because it looks like it's going to snap in an instant. Made in Scotland. We've got a number as well. 661. Makes me think June 1961. This is made time. I think the Style 8 came out in 64. So there was no overlap at that time. As I think for a while they still had the Style 7 and the 8 running at the same time, I think. I'm not sure I wasn't there. So grommet survived, that's good. We can start arranging the bits to get ready to clean them. So I'm gonna get my cleaning solution and I will be back my knuckle click when I do. So we got a shot glass full of acetone cleaning alcohol stuff. We got our dunking tank of water we got this towel, which is a sock, to clean up the bits, dry them and everything. And we got a cotton bud to clean the plates with. And somewhere I've also got a cocktail stick, which I will sharpen. Swiss Army knife. There it is. Right, I'm going to chop in that. Right, let's just give it a bit of a... Just get it small enough to fit into the pivot holes. small. Is it small enough? I don't know. There we go. Alright, that can fit through a needle, probably. So, let's start by dipping our cotton bud onto the acetone and rubbing at the plates. Where all the grease and grime is. And hopefully it's doing a good job. It looks like it is. Cutting through the mess of old oil and everything that was left there by previous owners. Oh, that's falling apart already. That's not very good, is it? Make the most of it. And we'll clean the edges of the plates as well. Because I usually forget to do that. I don't think you need to do it. But I think it can just make it look a bit nicer when you look at the movement from the side. Make sure to get it all in that balance wheel area as well. Let's zoom you in a bit. Now it's not looking black and slimy anymore. That's good. Hopefully this end of the stick lasts a bit longer. go just examine it closely for wear and stuff that needs to be cleaned a bit more it actually looks pretty good so I think we can go straight in with dunking it in the water oops just dropped it in there that's probably better I'm drawing it off with my sock Give it a good hard rub as well. Not only gets the acetone off, but it also 
just, I don't know, cleans it more. There we go. And that bit's quite thin, so make sure not to bend it like I'm doing. We go constructive based on destructive. We can go in with our pivot cleaner, stick it in the holes. There we go, we can see it coming out the other side, probably. Just gets all the grime and grease out of the pivot holes, which are the most important points to clean because that's where the friction is, or rather, shouldn't be. Clean that balance wheel pivot as well. Alright, on the other side, because I could have pushed it through. I like to do the back first and then the front. Sometimes. Okay, that looks pretty good, I think. I mean, it's not super clean, but it will definitely do a job. It's clean where it needs to be, that's the important part. So I'll just set that aside. And you probably don't want to see me do it for the rest of the parts. Literally just going in each little cog, each little thingy, each little bit, and just scrubbing it. So I will stop the video now and get back to you when I've cleaned it all. And this actually might be the end of part one, so goodbye.